Okay, just a comb of my hair. It's wild today, it's wild outside. It's rained uh, all last night. It was 12 degrees last night, 12 degrees during the night. And some of the days recently have had difficulty getting up to four. It's, it's strange the weather, isn't it? And then uh, it's rained all yesterday afternoon. Rained most of Saturday, rained all Friday night. Things are just pretty wet. Now then, we're going to talk about cars again today and uh, back to 1964. And one particular car. Um, during my time at the Lincolnshire Standard, I had the chance, I don't know how on earth this happened where the boss wasn't about, but Lionel Robinson, who was the big boss, the editor-in-chief, he was the chap who did all road tests and, you know, it was quite a, a good thing to do, wasn't it? He did all road tests and stuff like that and um, and wrote the articles and whatever. Well, this was a um, to go with an advert from Bates Strands of Curtain, who were the Citroen dealers in our area from east of England. East Midlands of England. I mean, they were the very first Citroen dealer in the whole area. Uh, had been for several years by 1964. And this was the announcement for the Palace. This is the car with the with the headlamps that turned as you turned the wheel, you know, in 1964. I think it was announced some some time recently in the 2000s that somebody produced a car with headlamps that turned the way you went. This is 1964. It's a DS, a DS Palace. I can't remember, it's a DS 23, I think it probably was. An amazing car. And anyway, um, Jeff Reynoldson, who was the owner of Bates Strands, his daughter worked in our office. She was very, very attractive. Sue, beautiful girl. Long legs, blonde. Wow, you know, classic film star type. Beautiful. Anyway, um, he wanted an advert for the, the new Citroen that's coming out. The latest model and so we um, did a little advertorial and someone had to do a road test and, and I got the chance and earth Roy Webley my boss didn't do it or Lionel or whatever I don't know but I did it and I was goodness 1964 I was uh, 20 yes I was 20 bloody hell so um, a 20 year old let loose a brand new car from the factory um, I suppose Jeff had his reservations when I turned up, but fortunately I, I liked driving and I was quite good and I took to it, took to it like a duck to water I can tell you, with that gearbox, you know, you just sort of start it and then you blip this and blip that and it changed the gear for you, an amazing thing and of course it was left hand drive. So this is the story, um, I hope you enjoy it. In this story called the one and only road test. It's taken from It's a Rum Life, book two, Boston, 1960 to 1970. If I were to choose perhaps the most futuristic or even magical motor car to road test and write about, then even today in the 21st century, the Citroen DS would feature in the top five. How it happened, I'm not entirely sure, but there I was, seated behind the wheel of a 1966 Citroen DS Palace, brand new and the latest in a long line of elegant and futuristic motor cars to come from France's Citroen factory. Bates Strand of Curtain had been the very first Citroen car dealers in the East Midlands, one of the very first in the UK after the Second World War was over. Their garage by the side of the main A16 road just outside Curtin, a bit south of Boston in Lincolnshire, was elegant and spacious with sweeping double entry to large glazed showroom and immaculate forecourt. Numerous large mature trees added to the ambience and aura. The proprietor, Jeff Reynoldson, had a reputation for strict conformity to tradition and no-nonsense obedience to his every whim. Whether the fact that his tall and very glamorous, curvaceous, blonde daughter worked in our department at the Boston Standard had any influence, I cannot imagine. But I was given the task of driving the new model and writing my impressions to go with an advertisement publicity feature 
uh, showing the best of this unusual motor car that was leading the world with its innovative ideas. Citroen. Readers will be aware of that popular corrugated iron sided twin cylinder 2CV lightweight saloon that began flooding the roads of Europe following the war. It was truly innovative too, but nothing compared to its big sister. The 1950s saw the very first Citroen ID saloon with its revolutionary new design. Their unique hydraulic suspension, long flowing bodies, the sweeping smooth panels and no running boards. This was a time in the UK when the first Morris Minor with its split windscreen was becoming popular. To place, the first, uh, to place the finest modern cruise liner next to the Ark would be a similar comparison. Nowhere in the world was there such an unusual and dramatically different motor vehicle. There was nothing to compare with the whole of the Citroen range. The much improved DS model followed early in the 1960s and the whole mechanical concept was alien to anything produced in the same era. Under the long smooth bonnet and behind the controls everything was revolutionary. In fact, to show how far ahead Citroen were with their design and ideas, in the mid 2000s, 40 years into the future, one international car manufacturer introduced headlamps that followed the direction you steered the car and they moved in unison. Citroen introduced this in 1968 with this DS Palace. My drive, by the way, was a French built car and ahead of the time that this was going to be launched in the UK. Driving a Palace Cars always have been a passion with me and different models intrigue me. The Palace I was to drive on the test was left hand drive. The newest cars for resale had yet to arrive and besides were normally ordered by the client direct from the UK factory with their own particular requirements for paint finish and internal refinements. Jeff explained the intricacies of pre-selected gearbox, semi-automatic clutch, power steering and power assisted brakes. All quite mind-boggling to a 20 year old who had so far only driven small saloons and vans. Oh, that is, apart from father's Ford Zephyr Zodiac Mark II automatic, his pride and joy. After much badgering and persuasion on my part, I had initially learnt to drive in this car and taken my one and only car test in it. In a DS Palace, after selecting first gear and beginning to move off with care, one did not actually need to touch the clutch again. A pre-selector lever on the steering column was used and by altering the engine speed, the gears changed themselves. Reducing speed and changing down took much more care. Before long we were bowling along the country lanes and eventually rejoined the A16 just north of Spalding. The left hand drive created no problems as there was only ever light traffic. Today in 2009 when I'm writing this, 46 years later, these Lincolnshire roads are unchanged. But the traffic has increased beyond all reason. The cart track wide roads have to cope with no the nose to tail lines of huge lorries, delivery vans, cars and buses serving our rapidly expanding population. Back in the DS Palace the drive was sheer delight. My enthusiasm seemed to improve my driving skills and brought unusual praise from the usually stern and unpredictable proprietor of the garage. We returned, me in ecstasy, <laughs> the car owner, only too pleased to have his pride and joy unscathed. Right in the actual report was child's play after the test drive and the result even impressed my editor. Unfortunately, I was never able to undertake any further test drives as this was normally the domain of our managing editor, the very one who had chastised me at great length for constantly abusing his fleet of vehicles. You can learn more about this if you read or listen to The Principal Van Story. 
There we are. Hope you enjoyed that little story brought to you by Cracker Books, written and read by Keith Sanders. There we are. Hope you enjoyed that little story. Thanks for being with us again today. Don't forget, wave the arm about. Don't touch the microphone. What's happened? Look, it's suddenly gone dark. Some sensor or other has done something. Anyway, right. If you like it, think about giving us a like. Now, since I've been doing this, we've jumped from 160 or 70, 100, 160 or 70 like um, subscribers. We've jumped to over 200. I mean, that's, wow, in, in a month. That's brilliant. I, I, it's very good. It helps us a lot, you know. So, right, give us a like. And if you think about, if you really like it, subscribe to the channel. And then YouTube let you know when we do something different. And also, how about sharing it with your mates, if you like it, you know, send it off to somebody else. Let them have a look at it. So uh, I'm sure in among all these videos that I've done, that there must be something you'd like to watch. I think some, a lot of them are amusing. There's one or two serious ones coming up. So there we are. Thanks for being with us today. Link at the end to tell you where to look at all other Cracker Books publications. All the complete books to download including children's storybooks and picture books, animal books, and the audio stories. You can download those. This is no pictures with them, just pure audio. They last about between 15 and half an hour, 15 minutes, half an hour. You can listen to them in a queue somewhere where you're getting bored. Okay, and download them free. The links are coming up. Thanks for being with us today. Bye bye.